If you see a geek on the street with a handgun, it's probably me in denial that I am one. Phillies and gentle colts, a long, long time ago, I wish for two very specific features for the future of Stepmania. Number one, I wish that there was some kind of option that you can go into and toggle on and off whether you want ITG holds for the game mode, pump it up. Kind of similar to how you can go into Stepmania's options and toggle on and off whether you want <clears throat> rolls to add to combo or not. A very simple request and one that I think was needed as early as the very first release of Stepmania 5. Obviously, I don't think it could have happened any earlier because I'm pretty sure Pro was Stepmania 4 engine based and really who talks about or plays Pro to begin with. And number two, I wish for some place in Stepmania that I could go and write 9 and 18 panel charts. Now, I didn't care whether this was a standalone unique game mode or in addition to Technomotion. I didn't care where it was in Stepmania. All I cared was that I had a place to go and try and write for some 9 and 18 panel charts. And I've been wanting to write for 9 panel since the 3.9 days. And to be completely honest, I really don't understand why we didn't get a 9 panel mode as early as 3.9. Now, I never changed the way I wrote my pump charts. <clears throat> despite them all being severely broken and unplayable, I do suppose, you know, it's not going to be an issue if you use Korean Pro or Infinity for the novice charts, but I'm specifically talking about the Hooves expert charts. Um, you can probably get away with them on keypad too, but if you're realistically thinking that any of these charts can be played on pad, uh, forget about it. I can't even think of one single example where your combo won't drop because of the way uh, pumps mechanics are. <clears throat> um... Now, uh, you know, I don't care what panel mode I'm writing for, whether it's 4, 5, 9, 500, I'm always going to want to write Legacy. And I have a lot of issues with Korean Pump, especially with in regards to uh, their holds. And long story short, I know that this could be another video topic, but <clears throat> ITG holds allow for more flexibility and creativity in chart writing, not to mention that you can just be a little bit more musically accurate. And what do I mean by that? Well, if you look at Korean pump charts, let's just say you have something simple, whole and eighth notes, and they're all holds. Well, if they're like kind of twisty and you got turns and whatnot, you got to shorten them by like a 16th note. If you notice that in official Korean pump, well, you wouldn't do that on four panel. So why would I want to do that on five panel? The hold um, that you're trying to follow the note in the song isn't being cut short by a 60, 16th note. So if you're not able to be musically accurate with your step chart uh, when, when you're following the song, then maybe there's something a little bit wonky with your mechanics now. Does that brake pump? Um, no. Is that a petty complaint? Yes, but it, it's something that I can't stand. I really don't like that visual look of shortening the 16th notes like that because they're so strict. Um, now, I was hoping people would remember Pump It Up Pro. I understand that a lot of people hate it in the community, but it, it was very important, and it had a mission, and its mission was to popularize the Pump It Up series to the Western audiences, especially. Now, I remember way back then, Pump It Up was very hard to find in arcades. Usually, you had to find like a Dave & Buster's, or oddly enough, I don't even know how this was a thing, but Andemiro supposedly had some kind of deal with Chuck E. Cheese's, and I remember Chuck E. Cheese being the only thing relatively close to me, I would go and check out the game and play it when the kids were in school. And for some weird reason, the manager really liked me. And every time I showed up, like he would like have a bucket of tokens, like here, you, you don't have to pay for anything. Help yourself to the soda fountain. He would like let me bring in a fan in the summertime when the air conditioner wasn't working. He was a really nice guy for some reason. But that was my first exposure to Pump It Up. And usually Chuck E. Cheese's, they either had Exceed or Exceed 2. Um, I heard rumors that some of them even had zero. If you had a Chuck E. Cheese that had zero, you were beyond blessed because that's incredible. And as as much as I want to say that Exceed 2 was the best old school mix, you know, I got to take off the nostalgia glasses because Exceed 2 was my first mix. That's not true. Zero was, was by far the best mix um, for old school pump. But, you know, back then, people really didn't like going back and forth between dance games. It, you either just exclusively played four panel or you exclusively played five panel. I was thankfully not one of those people. I enjoyed four panel ITG and I enjoyed Korean pump at the same time, but it was usually the four panel crowd that really didn't like pump it up. And they had some reasons for it. Some of them are petty and some of them were valid. For example, 
Um, four panel people really didn't like how clunky and ugly Pump It Up's UI was. They didn't like that there were no buttons on the cabinet, and back then people just assumed that was a special Konami patent. Uh, Pro showed us that wasn't true. But you know, you had to enter codes with your feet on the pad to get your options like speed modifiers. And of course, the timing windows are a joke. Now, that complaint is valid in my opinion. The timing windows are a problem, and, and this is really Korean Pump's downfall, in my opinion, is that the timing windows are so wide that, well, in general, the wider your timing windows, the more your lower difficulties are going to suffer and suffer. And really, the only time where Pump It Up seems valid to play are, are like the 20s and up, where you have gimmicks. Now, I'm not talking about gimmicks like scroll rate gimmicks. I'm talking about gimmicks with your feet, like you have to spam... Uh, in a ridiculous matter to get a full combo or to get all perfects. That's when the loose timing windows come in handy. But for everything below like a 20, what's the point? Like if you want to go play pump, you might as well just like go to the arcade with a friend. And if your friend plays singles, have him pay for a credit. You can hop up on the player two side next to him and just shadow step. You're going to get all perfects anyway. So what's the point in paying any money? Um, and, that, you know, this is a problem with just the wide timing windows and the fact that you don't even have to uh, tap the holds. And that's another thing that I really hate about Pump It Up, not having to tap the holds. And I've seen a lot of times, with, you know, if people's feet are big enough, especially if they're playing on the bracket list pads. They can cover all five panels with two feet. And if there's a section where there's nothing but holds, they can just stand there and get like a 6,000 combo or whatever. You know, I, I don't like the holds adding to combo either. But that's a mechanic that I think is broken. And, you know, when I was playing, you know, I felt accomplished. Like, when I got all perfects on a 14 or a 16, I felt good about myself back then. But I didn't know better. I didn't know just how busted the timing windows were. And then when I found out, those accomplishments didn't feel as special to me. So I, you know, with my pump charts, I was hoping to make a statement, maybe a little bit of a, little bit of a protest as well. Uh, I wanted people to see this and say, oh, look, people still want to write ITG charts for Pump It Up. Maybe there should be some kind of pro option in Step Mania. And I was not willing to use a mechanic that I thought was harmful to my chart writing, and especially since I didn't like it to begin with. So, you know, I made all these broken pump charts. And one day I truly believed that we would have some kind of special pro option for Step Mania. Now, as far as techno motion goes, I was mildly tempted to write eight panel charts because obviously that's the closest thing we have to a nine panel experience, but ultimately I rejected this because um, just like Pump It Up Pro, I thought that one day we would have to have a nine panel option for Step Mania. And, um, you know, I didn't want to write a bunch of eight panel charts and then have nine panel come out and then I'd feel like I'd have to edit them all to be nine panel because truth be told, I didn't want to write for eight panel to begin with. And another thing to understand about eight panel techno motion is that the patterns are very clunky and robotic like. Um, having a center panel makes the pattern transitions much smoother, as well as just a lot more appealing to the eye, not to mention that you can be an absolute terrorist with mind placement. Now, traditionally in any other dance game, you are guaranteed some kind of safety space to hop to to avoid the meanie anti steps. But in nine panel, you can move the player to whatever panel you want to. You can have the player jump really high or even off the pad if you want. Of course, it's up to the step artist to not make the mines unavoidably unsafe. Boy, does that sound like the uh, topic uh, of another controversial topic, but um, a, a discussion, I should say. But hey, listen, I wanted to play with this. I wanted to play with all the patterns. I wanted to see what kind of psychopath I could be with mine placement. And I was willing to wait as long as it takes. Now, um, before you let me know about Rhythm Horizon, I knew about that game for a long time. I'm pretty sure I knew about it before it was even released, when it was just being talked about. And I'm actually pretty sure I played with one of the developers in, arca in the arcades long, long ago, but it's not for me. And there's a lot of reasons for that. Number one, the subscription fee. You know, I don't have money for that. And even if I did, that I find that pri a little bit pricey, in my opinion. Uh, two, no custom content. That hurts a lot. Three, for a game they want money for, you would think that they'd be proud to advertise their charts, but I had the hardest time 
um, finding chart examples of this game. And from the chart examples that I did find, I was not impressed with the chart design at all. I very strongly disagreed with it. And of course, number four, the big killer, no legacy features aside from mines. Now, most people have moved on from the Stone Age era of stepping, that is DDR, and they want other kind of step types like rolls and whatnot. So people need to understand that legacy stepping is not optional for me. It is absolutely essential. So even if all the other things I complained about, or I said that were kind of negative about the game, let's say the game was free. Let's say custom content was allowed. Let's say I thought the game had amazing charts. Well, I'm still not using it because I absolutely need the legacy features. Yes, it's that important to me. And I'm not hating on Rhythm Horizon. If you pay for the game and you enjoy it, I'm, I'm happy for you. You know, I, I, one nice thing I can say about it is their community seems very friendly, very open and very positive, no drama over there. But unfortunately, you know, I know it's been around for ages and I've been itching to write for Nine Panel for ages, but I had to pass it up. So let's get on with the story. <laughs> one day I was cruising through social media and by the way, cruising through social media is usually a mistake. Don't cruise through social media. I came across a post in a, in a rhythm game group and I don't remember exactly what the post said, but it was specifically asking a question about Step Mania, mainly in regards to the future of it. And there was a very specific reply. And that reply said in the exact words, bronies will be ruining the future of Step Mania. Now I read that comment and I panicked. Why did I panic? Well, I guess I need to take you all back to my original story with stepping ponies in, and with Step Mania together, ponies and Step Mania. So before I was working on ponies, I was working on another pack project that wasn't ponies, Captain Obvious over here. And I was getting comments and these comments were saying things like, hey, Brian, cool charts. I really like your charts, but can you step this song by Fuzogs for me? Or can you step this song by this brony artist? Or why aren't you working on a pony pack project? Ponies are in their prime. Uh, this is something that you should probably be definitely doing right now. And I had absolutely no issues with stepping other people's requests for Step Mania. I've been very open to that and I've been doing that virtually since I started stepping. The only problem is that it had to fit the theme of the pack that I was working on, whether that's music from the Unreal Tournament series or the music from the arcade games Killer Instinct, it had to fit the theme, and I was obviously not working on a pony pack theme at the moment. But deep down inside, I thought these people were kind of right. And it's a little bit tragic because I was not invested into pony music at that time. Now, how I got into ponies, I might as well tell that story. I was a raging StarCraft nerd, like really big into Brood Wars for like well over 10 years. And I had a very small StarCraft II phase. I played competitively for a year or two. And I was looking up StarCraft II videos online and on YouTube in my recommendations at the very top of the list, PonyCraft II shows up and I saw the view count. I was like, wow, what is this thing? So I click on it and I realize it's My Little Pony. And I said to myself, wait a second, isn't this a show for little girls? Uh, you know, I remember My Little Pony. I remember, you know, I'm showing my age here, but in the 90s, you know, my sister would watch it and I was wait waiting for my, while I was waiting for my turn to watch Ninja Turtles or have uh, uh, some NES playtime video games. And I didn't understand the concept of generational ponies, but yeah, these ponies look different. And I said, w what's this, po what's the point of this? Isn't this like a, a brainless show about little pony girls giggling and having tea parties like why is there not Dora the Explorer Craft 2 or something? Um, and, and I watched this video, and I couldn't help but feel impressed. A lot of work went into this video. The syncing was spot on. And I found that weird, like, okay, this is very well made, but nobody does something this well made just as a joke. And, um, you know, I, I watched the video. I said, okay, that was a thing. And then... Um, you know, I kind of forgot about it. And a month later, I was going through something in life and I randomly remembered that video. So, you know, I said, I, I, I feel like watching an episode. I want to find out what this show is all about. So I watched my first episode was Find a Pet. Um, yeah, it was Find a Pet back uh, on YouTube when you could watch the full episodes during the hub days and uh, the copyright plague uh, didn't take everything down. I watched that and then I watched another episode and I got hooked on it. And, um, you know, 
I watched the show for about a month, and in about a month uh, into watching the show, I discovered the fandom. I never even heard of the word fandom before, but once I discovered the fandom, I saw the music scene, and I'm pretty sure that the first song I ever heard was Dragon Greed by Omnipony, and after that it was Alex S, after Alex S, after Alex S. And I was very conflicted about this brony music because it was very loud, experimental. There was a lot of dubstep. There was a lot of a lot of rap. And, you know, I had like a kind of a cringy rap phase or punk rock phase in middle school. But in high school, I was a classical guitarist. And maybe I was a bit of an Octavia snob at this time because I was contemplating, you know, well, do I even respect this as music? It's so loud and um, it, it's weird. It's weird to me. And why does this music need ponies? Like, I, I never understood the music works fine without the ponies and I didn't even know if I, I should consider this music and um you know I just I just was never into it and if I had a tier list of the top best things that I think bronies created in terms of art unfortunately the music uh scene would have been at, at the very bottom of that tier list and that is an absolute shame because today it's at the very top of the tier list for me and what ultimately got me into into the whole pony music scene was a YouTube channel that I think every single one of you has heard of. It's called Deleted Pony Songs. And I started listening to the uploads and I, I became fascinated. I became absolutely fascinated with brony music history. And, you know, when I got into the show, it was during the season two hiatus. I was there, you know, I wish I was there from the beginning, but I wasn't, okay? But at least I was there to see the peak, the pony craze. It was all over the media. It was everywhere. People were walking around with their Fluttershy and Vinyl Scratch t-shirts. It was a time. And I'm not being a wise ass when I say this, but I sincerely feel sorry for any of you who didn't have a, a pony phase or didn't get to see that. It was it was a time. It was, it was like the Living Tombstone song, The Good Old Days. And I'm disappointed because I was also there to see the music scene. And, you know, with all these re-uploads, it's like, Putting together a piece of the puzzle, of, of, a, of a puzzle, you have the middle picture, the most important part, but you're missing a lot of other pieces, and I, I wish I was there to see, you know, how many views the video got originally, how many likes it got, uh, all the comments and the artist replies to the comments, that's all gone, and, and that's depressing because I wish I was there to see that during the time when the artist originally uploaded it, um, th and this is kind of sad because, you know, as I'm watching this channel, I realize everything seems to get deleted at one point with, with brony musicians. These artists suicide, uh, these bronies suicide their artist names so fast. And this is one reason why I just don't leave a, a lot of comments on brony videos because what's the point? It's going to get deleted. If I do, I usually just keep the comments very short. Um, but, you know, that channel, Deleted Pony Songs, really inspired me to think about making a pony pack. And... Um, you know, thinking to the requests, I think the first request I ever got was Find a Pet by Fuzogs. And I just want to say that Fuzogs is an amazing musician. Um, he's definitely one of the big league, I call him one of the big league hitters of the music scene. And his music is, feels like the most detailed to me. Like I can hear a Fuzogs song and then I can hear it again. And I said, wait a second, I'm hearing sound effects that I didn't hear the first time. And this is especially true when I slow the song down in the Step Mania editor. It's like, looking at a piece of art and the closer you get the the more you realize that there are small details in that picture that you, you didn't notice um but it's not just fuzog's music all the music that i was listening to i was very intimidated and by that i mean the music was very rhythmically complex uh i felt like i was not experienced enough as a stepper to accurately uh tackle these brony songs and make good charts for them and looking back to where I was then to where I am now, I was 120% correct about that. Yes, even Rainbow Dash knew I was not ready to step for ponies. So unfortunately, I declined these requests and I went back to just doing my thing. A lot of time passed and I started to change my creative vision. I started to think with a much more open mind about stepping. I started to approach stepping differently. Let's just say I was going through a bit of a step revolution and no pun intended. And I wouldn't say I was getting cocky, but I would say the, the right word was confident. I was feeling a little bit more confident about my step making abilities. And I said, you know, all these people wanted me to do ponies. Maybe now is the time that I'm ready to try. 
So I went to a rhythm game group on social media. It was like a Stepmania group or something like that. I don't think it exists anymore. And I asked, does anybody want to make a pony pack with me? And nobody was interested, but somebody did tag me and say, hey, Brian, there's already a major pony pack project out there. They're desperately looking for new team members. They're looking for chart examples. Why don't you show them what you're made for? Write some pony charts for them and, and join their team. And there was a link, so I clicked on the link and it took me to a page called Trotmania. And I quickly learned that this was not just a big pony pack project. This was quite literally the biggest pony pack project on the internet. And uh, I found that a little bit weird because I had played many other pony pack projects in the past, much smaller ones, most notably, and still my personal favorite pony pack to play is the Arrows or Magic series. And, you know, I saw the date that this project was started. I'm not sure if it was the first pony pack ever, ever made, but it's very old. Trotmania is very old. Um, and I'm like, why didn't anybody else tell me about this? Or why didn't, at the very least, I get a YouTube recommendation about this project or something like that? And I said, okay, so I read every little bit of detail about the staff members, about the vision of the game, and, and all the information I could on the website. And I thought it was kind of cool they have their own theme. But one thing that really opened up my eyes, like Tempest Shadow, was that this is not a one-and-done type deal with, with pack with the, making the pack. It's um, a pack that gets updated throughout the years with new content. And I was very excited about that because that's exactly what I wanted to do if I had my own pony pack project. So I was very much on board with that idea. So, okay, I read everything on the website. I say, let's check out this game. So I download the first mix or whatever. And I was going through it. And, you know, the first thing I noticed that it appeared to have a unique uh, rating system that I had never seen before. And I, you know thought, okay, you know, it's unusual, but it's not totally rare when you have, like, a really unique big pack project like this to have a custom rating. I've seen it done in the past. Obviously, that's not what was going on, but that's what I was thinking in my mind when I saw it. I never saw this rating system before. And then um, another thing I thought was a little weird was that as I was playing through the charts, I noticed that they were severely understepped. Like, they were lacking a lot of detail, a very sub-mediocre quality, and the only reason I thought of that was, was because, you know, they have a very small staff team and they have a massive amount of content. So whenever something like that happens, um, quality oftentimes gets sacrificed for quantity. But I said, okay, you know what? I want to try out for this team. So I had to go find some chart examples and I'm looking and I'm looking and I'm looking through my charts and I hate everything I see. And I realized that I don't have anything that showcases the kind of stepper of who I am today. I went through a major transformation with how I approach charting very differently. And, um, you know, I realized something. I, I need to showcase work, but I also realized that they have a, a lot of missing content. So here's what I said to myself. I'm going to showcase my work, my new style of writing, and I'm also going to help them out at the same time by filling in a lot of their missing content. And, you know, they had a lot of missing singles expert. They had a ton of missing doubles expert, so I was going to fill that in, and I was also going to fill in pump it up steps for them. And I thought this would be a good experience, because you can't really judge a stepper just by one chart alone. Even if that step artist nails it 100%, you can't judge, that, judge them by, by just one chart. You can't even judge them by multiple charts of the same genre or similar genres. You have to look a lot deeper into that than that. You have to look into what game modes they write for, how they do with the doubles for those game modes. You have to look into how they handle mind charts or hand charts and stuff like that. And I thought this was a good experience because I was finding a lot of songs with very unique genres. I thought, you know, I could discuss with them what genres were my strengths, which, which ones were my weaknesses and I had to work on more. And obviously, you know, when, when I finished this, I was going to show it to them. It was going to be like a surprise gift. So if they liked what they saw, then they can have all the all these um, charts that I wrote for them. And then I would join their team and write for however long this project lasted. Now, I probably wrote a little more than I should. I was a little bit nervous at that time. I had, Ever since I started writing step charts, it's always been my goal to eventually land, find a cool little home I can belong to, a, a team of steppers, join the team and just write charts for the community with the team as long as there's no drama. So I thought, you know, something like this would be appreciated. And I wanted to make sure that they absolutely knew what they were getting into when it came to my approach to charting. So I was getting ready to finish things up. And then I started reading comments on the internet. 
And these comments were saying things along the lines of, the people from Trotmania no longer have any love for Pump It Up players. They have zero tolerance for ITG steppers. They also take other people's ITG charts and they butcher them for their Trotmania game. And I saw at least one comment, I think, on YouTube where someone was saying he donated charts and they didn't let him know that they were going to alter them. And uh, he didn't sound too happy about that. So I said, what the heck? I don't understand. I'm very confused because when I played Trotmania, they were in the groove mines, they were in the groove rolls, and they were official pump it up steps. So I didn't know what was happening. So what I did was I went back to the site. I rechecked everything because I thought I might have missed something. And I didn't miss anything with their descriptions of what this project is. And so I downloaded some more recent packs. And this time I started really studying their charts. And it appears that what these comments were saying about Trotmania were true. So to absolutely verify this, I went on YouTube and I looked up what modern DDR is. Now, it's been a very long time since I looked at DDR. The last time I looked at DDR was oh wow that was a long time ago that was like back around the time where itg had died shortly and the de death of itg was absolutely devastating to me it's something that i'm still sad about to this day i'm probably going to be sad for the rest of my life about losing itg and um i swear if some magical pony wizard like star swirl the bearded came to me and said brian here's a magical green button if you press this button you can bring back the In the Groove series permanently, but Step Maniacs will be wiped from history. I would push that pony aside and take a freaking Shao Kahn sized hammer to that green button. I don't even have words to describe just how much I hate Step Maniacs. Um, however, I do have to be fair. Step Maniacs does technically do some things better than ITG. However, if ITG were allowed to continue, I strongly believe that ITG would have done just as well, if not better, than what Step Maniacs has to offer. So I really can't even give it credit that. I remember um, way back then on the official In the Groove forums, someone once said, to get around like the patents and whatnot, why don't you just have ITG and put a center panel uh, in, in the middle and just ha never have anybody touch it? <laughs> I, you know, I wish I never screenshotted anything back then. I wish I had a screenshot of that. Does anybody remember that post? That was on the official in the Groove forms. That is essentially what Step Maniacs Generation 1 was. <laughs> it really was. But anyway, I'm, I'm not here to, to talk about Step Maniacs too much. Um, I, I just remember that period where there was a bit of si awkward silence in the dance game community. And then I heard rumors about a new DDR coming back. And I remember all the Bamani neckbeards... They were bragging about how this new DDR is going to be the big bad ITG killer. Yeah, this is going to make all those ITG clean cut gym chads come crawling back on their hands and knees, begging for forgiveness, uh, going to Konami and begging for forgiveness for ever leaving DDR in the first place. And they're going to feel real bad that they ever played ITG to begin with. You know, I kind of rolled my eyes. I'm like, that sounds a bit like an exaggeration. But I said, you know what? Even though I'm probably going to hate Konami for the rest of my life, I need to keep an open mind. Why? Because they technically acquired the rights to ITG. So what if they actually studied the game and made a good product for once? I'm going to keep an open mind and I'm going to check it out. Well, the mix came out. It was called Supernova. It was a direct response to the ITG series. And I really don't have much to say about this game. It was absolute trash. It was like a joke when you compare the chart quality compared to ITG. And I think even the most rabid DDR fanboys and girls out there would admit that DDR Extreme was a step in the wrong direction for the series. It was definitely the decline and the downfall of DDR. And I would only say that Supernova was slightly better than Extreme, simply because it had updated graphics and a lot more content, but it had that same trashy charting style that I like, like Extreme that I learned to hate after I played the In the Groove series. So it was very disappointing. I was not impressed at all with Supernova. And then I heard Supernova 2 was coming out, and I said, okay, you know what? Technically, it was a long time since they made a dance game. Maybe now, you know, it might have been a rough start. Maybe now they got it right. So I'm going to give the DDR series one last chance. And Supernova 2 hit arcades. I checked it out. And again, just like Supernova 1, I don't have much to say about it. Same trash, different pile. And I said, you know what? That's it. I'm done. I'm done with DDR. I remember when I got into dance games, DDR was originally the love of my life. And I didn't think that anything could be better than that game because I was ignorant. I didn't know any better. 
And the reason I found out about other options was I had a friend I played StarCraft Brood War with, and he was, he was a DDR nerd. And he told me about some copycats, some clone games called In the Groove and Pump It Up. And he was describing them to me, and I said, okay, In the Groove definitely sounds like a stupid clone of DDR. But I said, wait a second, Pump It Up, diagonal uh, panels and a center and a center panel, that actually sounds legitimately interesting to me. I'm kind of curious about Pump It Up. And one day I was in a game store, and I found a copy, a used copy of In the Groove for 10 bucks. And I looked at the box art, and I was reading, you know, on the back of the, the box as well, and I was like, yeah, this is definitely a stupid DDR clone. And I had a very interesting job back then. Uh, I worked with middle school and high school kids, and... Um, we were trying to introduce children to exercising while playing video games. And some of that equipment was very experimental. And of course we had DDR um, and I had to learn it and, and teach the kids. And that, that's kind of how I got into dance games. Um, and and uh, I'm looking at the box. I said, what are my kids going to think about this? Because I would pay out of my own pocket for a new DDR mix for the kids to play with, you know, sometimes at the, at the arcade. We had quite a few few mixes there, but we really, you know, they really appreciated it when I, whenever I would bring in a new mix for them to play. I said, what are my kids going to think about this game? So I bought it, I took it home, and I popped it in, the t in my PS2, and the first thing I noticed was that the arrow graphic skin, specifically the metal skin with the hallway mod, was like eye candy. It looked so good to me. Um, especially wh the way those arrows shined when, when they scrolled to the top. That looks so much better than DDR's, um, DDR's arrow skin. And I was getting my mind blown by looking at um, the difficulties. You know, it went above the 10 rating in old school DDR, like the 11s and up. I was like, wow, this is insane. And, and not just, just the 11s and up, but all the, the experts. The, and even, even the lower difficulties, they were following rhythmic patterns that seemed like so well thought out it made DDR and Pump It Up look like they were autogen, like they were AI created. Like this, this looks like a human mind, a human, a human sat down and really thought out these charts. And the, and the rhythmic patterns were so intelligent and so creative. I, I, I just couldn't believe it. It was like a game from the future that shouldn't exist now. Have you ever felt that way? Have you ever seen a video game where you said, this game doesn't belong in, in this timeline, it's too advanced. Maybe some examples, The Legend of Zelda for the Nintendo 64, or um, Unreal Tournament, or even maybe the original Unreal. I, I guess the best example I could give would be like the arcade game Killer Instinct. I remember uh, I was on a bowling league, and um, I remember when they, installed, they put that arcade in, I would just gawk at it, and the kids would scream at me that it's my turn to bowl, and I, like, couldn't, like, I couldn't believe it, what I was seeing. It was just too good to be true. And I was, that's how I was feeling about In the Groove. And I said, wow, this game is absolutely incredible. So I took it to my job and I showed the kids. And the kids had a very similar reaction to mine. They really thought the anti-steps, the mines were cool. And probably their favorite thing was that they had a new mechanic that they had to bend down and hit the panels with their hands. Hand charts, yeah, it was crazy. And everybody was having a blast. And we eventually just shelved all the DDR games, and we just played DDR. I, I'm sorry, not DDR. We just played ITG. And um, keep in mind that I'm still a very new player when it comes to dance games. And I eventually cleared all the level 9s in ITG. And I remember clearing my first two 10s, which many people probably wouldn't even consider a 10, but officially it was rated a 10. Queen of Light was my first 10, and my second 10 was a lot of... Um, first tens in ITG for new players, uh, Anubis. And then after I cleared those, I said, I wonder if ITG made me a better player. So I was curious, and I remember when I got into DDR, I saw Max 300, and don't meme me in the comments, I hate those Max 300 memes. Um, so I think the mix I had was DDR Max for the PlayStation 2. And just seeing that was just awkward again, because it's just like, you know, I was playing ITG and... And, and, the, and there's rhythmic brilliance in the step chart, and it's just like DDR is like, okay, kids, here's your generic song at 120 BPM, and here's nothing but like whole, whole and eighth notes, and like DDR Max is like, where the heck are the 16th notes? And 
granted, yes, there are 16th notes in DDR Max, but they're, they're just so few. But anyway, I think that mix had Max 300. And I remember seeing that and saying, okay, that looks really hard. I see it's probably possible, but I don't think I'm ever going to get good at dance games uh, enough to the point where I could pass something like that. And I said, I want to try it now. I want to see if ITG made me a better dance game player. So I played it on heavy and um, I cleared it with ease. It, was, it was, wasn't even difficult for me. I didn't get like a triple A score, but it was a double A score. I'm not sure if I had any misses or not, but after that, I was satisfied and I shelved DDR permanently. And I said, I, I'm just going to focus on In the Groove and Korean Pump It Up from now on. And now that I'm at the arcade, I'm looking at Supernova 2. I said, you know what? Not only am I done with playing DDR, I'm also done with following the series. This game is absolute trash. Um, it, it's, it's quite clear to me that, you know, DDR is an expensive game for arcade operators to buy. But it's, it's not expensive because it's a good game. It's a well-made game. That's not true. I mean, you can even argue that um, Old School Pump was better than Old School DDR. Now, that, that, that's difficult to defend, but I think it's possible because, let's just be honest, both games had horrible step charts. And I swear, if Konami and Andamiro represented My Little Pony characters, they'd be the snips and snails of dance games. And obviously, Rockstar games would be Rainbow Dash. But... The game sells because of the name. That is what why DDR is so popular, because everybody knows that name. And not every arcade has your sweaty tryhards, but every arcade has casual players. And like I'm talking about casual players like your 16-year-old high school girls who are high on soda and, and candy, and they want to make everybody's life miserable in the arcade by playing Speed Over Beethoven 1,000 times in a row. Like These people bring in money, and if they see anything else on the screen that doesn't say DDR... They're going to think they're not getting the authentic Dance Dance Revolution experience. They're going to think they're getting ripped off. They're not going to get their money's worth. And they, they're probably not going to play the game. And they'll go play something else or not play anything at all. And, uh, you know, it's this rabid type of fanboyism. Not only I see in arcades and when I talk to people. Because you can't explain to them the differences because they don't care. Because chances are most of the time they just play novice and easy, easy charts to begin with. But, you know, I, I, I see this kind of fanboyism online too. And just to give you an example... One time I was on social media, and I don't follow any DDR or Bamani pages, but I think there was a post that, that showed up in my newsfeed only because I had a friend comment on it. And, you know, there was a post, and it was asking a question to DDR players about Pump It Up. And a lot of it was a poll. A lot of people voted, well over a thousand. And the overwhelming majority of people vo who voted said that they would not touch Pump It Up because they considered its existence disrespectful being that it is nothing but a DDR clone. Folks, when you call In The Groove a DDR clone, that is hyper, hyper cringe. When you call Pump It Up a DDR clone, you should be slapped twice by one of those 300-pound Russian slap-fighting championship men, once for saying something so unbelievably stupid and untrue, and a second time just in case your head is still attached to your body. Pump It Up is in no way a DDR clone, and neither is ITG. Uh, by definition of a clone in a video game sense, it's supposed to be a cheap knockoff, it's supposed to be inferior, but both In the Groove and Pump It Up are a million times better than DDR. And it's so awkward to talk about it because if you put ITG and DDR side by side, and let's say you showed this game to a dance game fanatic, but somehow they didn't know uh, what game came out first or the history of any dance games, uh, it, in reality, it looks like DDR is the cheap copycat clone because the quality is so poor. Um, but, you know, my point is, I was done. I was done, and sure enough, DDR did change a little bit. Um, and I was seeing that in the YouTube videos for modern DDR. I saw the X scale, and my goodness, that has to be the ugliest rating system I have ever seen in my entire life. It is confusing to understand. I think it's like 1.5 times the old school DDR scale. It's confusing to understand. It's not accurate. Good luck writing anything below a, a level 14 on the X scale. And honestly, what is the point of the X scale when chances are you're never going to have a true level 1 to begin with? And ITG slash old school DDR level 1 was extremely bare bones as it was. What does a true X scale 1 look like? Does it have like less than 50 steps? Chances are you're never going to have a chart with less than 50 steps, unless you're like making little weenie step maniacs cuts to your song, but no, DDR is usually like, what, a minute 45 to two minutes in song length? 
you're never going to get something like that. So, you know, I hate the X scale so much that personally, I would even rather rate my four panel charts on the Korean pump scale than use, I would rather use any rating system than the X scale. It's a terrible rating system. So I saw that and then I saw shock arrows and, um, you know, I went back to Trotmania and I started looking at their doubles charts again. I didn't look too much at them because they were even more, more understepped than their singles charts. And then I saw a couple chart examples where the mines were stretched all the way across the screen. I said, aha, that's what that's about. And I know I'm going to get a little bit off topic again, but I got to get this off my chest. Do you guys realize how bad it looks to do something like that? Like, that has to be the stupidest thing i ever seen in my life. To have a rule that says, if you want to put down one single anti-step in your chart on doubles, you have to stretch them out all the way across the screen. That's eight mines every single time. You know, I've seen a lot of stupid ideas and rules in the stepping community when it, came, when it comes to chart design, but that has to be the dumbest rule I have ever seen in my entire life. What the heck are you guys afraid of? Is Twilight Sparkle going to play your doubles chart and she's standing on the left down on player one side? And maybe you're afraid she's going to use her magical unicorn teleportation powers to teleport to the upright on player two side. So we better put mines over there to discourage that, even though that wouldn't give the player any benefit to begin with. It's like, what? Excuse me? It's like Edgelord's first time writing a step chart. And his logic is, well, if I stretch the mines all the way across the screen, that'll make my chart look real badass. Yeah, that'll really up the difficulty. No, dummy, you only need two mines to move the player from where he's standing. Technically, there could be a time and place where something like that is acceptable. For example, I had a chart um, for a song called Payback, and it almost did that. There was a single column where there was a hold arrow. It didn't go all the way across the screen, but the point is it was following something very specific in the lyrics. And, um, you know, something like that's okay, or something like, let's say you're building mind patterns and you you get to the point where you get them all the way across the screen. You're building little by little. Like, that's okay. But 99.9% .9 of the time, you would never want to do something so ugly in your step chart. And even if you're good at following the rhythms, the beats in the, in the, with the notes, the tap notes, when people see that in your chart with the minds, they're going to think that part of your chart is a joke. And another thing I noticed, and this is um, sometimes with official DDR, but I really see it a lot with fan-made charts. And by the way, 95% of four panel charts that are fan made or ITG based that should tell you something to begin with but these DDR charts that are fan made they, they do this really weird thing like let's say the BPM is 100 a single instrument gets added to the song the BPM goes from like 100 to 1000 then the BPM's 1000 and then another instrument in the background that you can barely hear to begin with fades out slightly and it goes from a thousand back uh back to a hundred okay these extreme bpm slowdowns and speed ups uh, again it's like edge lord's first time making a step chart and he discovers bpm slowdowns and speed ups and just like the anti-steps in step mania he uses the it in the worst way imaginable um again something like that could be valid but most of the time these bpm gimmicks are so unbelievably forced that when i see them i just stop watching the video it's just, it's horrendous chart writing to me. I, I really can't stand looking at that. So I realized that and more, and I got really discouraged because this means that all the work I did for Trot Mania, and I put a lot of work into this, was not going to get used. And I was very frustrated because I was not lazy with my approach with understanding what Trot Mania is. And, um, you know, you can't assume that people are, are just going to be on board with writing an out for an outdated charting style that's been obsolete since ITG one, and like I said before, when I played Trot Mania, there were, there were I, there was ITG stuff in it. Why they decided to remove that, uh, I don't know. That was a terrible decision. But uh, you know, it's frustrating to me too because there could have been a list of like rules, charting where they could have explicitly stated, "Hey, we're DDR only on the website" or something, or there could have been a list of rules. And I had to find out what the rules were for Trot Mania, and I wrote them all down. And the list was so ridiculously huge and stupid, that I was not left myself asking what I can't do in a step chart. I was left myself asking, well, what the heck can I actually do when I make a step chart for Trot Mania? Um, and it just doesn't make sense. It's like telling a master chef he can't use certain seasonings, herbs, or spices in his meal. It, it, it's like asking Gordon Ramsay, uh, can you make me a meal inspired by DDR charting creativity? 
And Gordon Ramsay will, will say something like, sure. And he, he'd come back and slam a can of baked beans on the table and say, here's your DDR-inspired meal, you jackass. Now let me go back to writing my flavorful ITG charts or something like that. It's like telling an artist who draws a, a, who, or paints an amazing picture. You're banned from using these colors if you want to make, if you want to make paintings for us. It, it, it's like, what? Like, it doesn't make any sense. Not only does it hurt the step chart so much, it hurts the artist trying to express themselves, and ultimately it hurts the project for which these charts are written for. So, you know, th that this was kind of upsetting to me. And, you know, it's not only that, there could have been other things that I could have saw. Like, for instance, if I saw, you know, these guys do their own theme. So if they had, um, you know, if they can do their own theme, they can certainly make um, their own skin for like a, an anti-step, like a shock arrow skin. If I saw that, yeah, I didn't know what chalk hours were back then, but, you know, I would have started asking questions. I believe I would have realized that there was something different going on here if I saw that. Or, um, you know, the name itself, Trotmania, it just kind of feels like a lie to me. You know, what does Trotmania mean? Trotmania is a bona fide name of Stepmania. What is Stepmania? Stepmania is a rhythm game engine that features multiple different game modes and a lot of different charting styles. So if you're going to be something more accurate... You know, why don't you call yourself Trot Trot Revolution or Daring Do Revolution? I don't know. Don't call yourself something that you're clearly not. And it's misleading. And it's no wonder that I got confused because I'm not the only one out there who completely gave up on four panel when ITG died and we saw the disgrace that was Supernova series. So I had a choice to make. I could delete everything I ever made uh, for ponies and... Um, go back to my sub-mediocre, boring pack project. I guess I can't hate on it too much because it was a stepping stone for me to becoming a better step artist. I had plans for 300 songs for that pack. I didn't make a public promise on that. That was just like a personal goal. So I could go back, uh, delete everything and go back and finish that up. Or I could start my own pony pack. And I thought about it and I realized that ponies were challenging me in a way uh, that I felt like was making, turning me into, molding me into a better step artist. It was challenging in a good way. I felt like I was getting better at stepping because of ponies. And I really enjoyed working on ponies. So I said, you know what? I'm going to make my own pony pack. And, you know, I had charts scattered here and there. You know, there was dance singles, dance doubles, you know, pump here and there. I said, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take these scattered charts. I'm going to fill in ITG singles and doubles expert, as well as Pump It Up Pro singles and doubles expert. And then I'll throw in the novice steps because that's just something historically I've always done. You know, usually people just play novice or expert. Those are like the two most popular um, difficulty levels. Once people get through easy, medium, and hard, they usually never go back. And I know that some people really appreciate my, that I write novice steps. So uh, after I do that, after I fill in all those steps, I'm going to find some new and original content, and then I'm going to take it from there. And folks, that is how In the Hooves Pony It Up was born. So going back to that comment I saw on social media, why w was I terrified that bronies were going to ruin the future of Stepmania? By the way, I will be right back. I have to do something really quick. Here's what I'm going to ask you to do. Twilight Sparkle is here to listen. Tell her all your thoughts and concerns. I will be right back.
Okay, I'm back. I apologize for that. Did you tell Twi what did you tell Twilight Sparkle? Let me know in the comments. <laughs> anyway, back to the story. Um, why did I freak out um, when I read that post comment? Bronies will be ruining the future of Stepmania. Well, I freaked out because bronies in the Stepping community are an extreme rarity, and that is a big, big shame. Because, um, you know, bronies love this music. Non-bronies love this music, and even brony haters love brony music. And the only people left active in the stepping community that are bronies were the people from Trotmania. And I was really, really afraid that, you know, I didn't want to jump to conclusions and assume that this was them, that they were referring to the people at Trotmania, but seriously, who else could they be referring to? And I was afraid that they would remove um, legacy step types from, you know, like, lifts, rolls, and fakes from the pump it up game mode. I was even worried that what's to stop them from removing them from the dance mode? You know, their charting quality is pretty low. They, they have ridiculous censorship with their charting. And um, they don't seem to care about it. Um, so why, why would they, why would they um, not remove it, you know? So I, I was kind of freaking out a little bit. And then I laughed at myself. I said, you know, even if that's true... I can still just stick with Stepmania 5. It's not that big of a deal. But a part of me felt like I need to go investigate. I need to find out just who is behind this new Stepmania project. And I need to make my voice heard and, you know, let them know about my concerns. So I found uh, Ponyville FM and Friends. I believe I found that from the Trotmania website. And I joined it. And I posted a, a video chart that I made. And I just, I don't remember exactly what I said. It was in their Rhythm Game channel. Um... But I said I was very interested in learning about this new Step Mania. And instantly I got invited to two servers, Discord servers. I got invited to Trot Mania Outpost. And as soon as I got invited there, I got a DM from one of the developers. And he's like, hey, I'm going to get ready to start uh, altering your charts to be DDR. I said, what do you mean by altering them to be DDR? You mean like removing the lifts the, and the rolls and, and all the step types? He goes, yeah. I said, no, you're not, buddy. Don't even think about doing that. Every step type has a a purpose in my chart. I don't just put them in randomly. Uh, they have a purpose that makes the chart better. And on top of that, you know, you, you might have people who are okay with altering their charts, but I'm clearly not. I'm clearly not. I work really hard on my charts. And um, we're not even talking about like a single lift or a single roll. We're talking about charts filled with legacy step types. So if, if they were to be removed, the charts would have to be reworked from the ground up. And I was not, I was not okay with that. And I think I had to remember, I remember explaining, you know, more into detail what I was about with charting and why legacy needs to be in, in step charts. Uh, the other server I was invited to, I don't think exists anymore because it was probably deleted. And that's a shame because I had a lot of chat history there. Um, but it's completely understandable. It's, it's not like I'm mad that it's deleted. It, it's understandable. That server was called Project Moondance. Now, Project Moondance was called Outfox back then, but you more primarily referred to it as Moondance. And I remember being there and, like, I did not understand this name, Moondance. What does it mean? I asked. And this was a long time ago, so I hope I'm getting this right. But I believe the explanation given to me was that it's a reference to a My Little Pony character called Moondancer. Now, I know who Moondancer is. I've seen every single episode of G4, including the Encore episodes. Uh, so I'm a little bit disappointed I didn't pick up on that. But... I'm pretty sure that was the explanation. Anyway, regardless, I'm in this server. I find the lead guy. His name is Sleepy Pony slash Squirrel. I'm going to call him Squirrel for this video. And I DM him and I say, hey, listen, buddy, I really appreciate it that you're updating Stepmania. I'm excited about it. But um, please don't break anything with the older charts. Please don't remove the legacy step types from Pump or Dance. I told him about my dreams and wishes about having a nine panel mode, as well as um, an option for Pump It Up Pro. And I shared a pony pump chart example of why my charts are so busted with pump. And, you know, thinking back to the DM, I don't think he knew anything about what Pro even was. So he asked me to detail every tiny little difference between Korean pump and, um, and this Pro and Pump It Up Pro. And I did, and it took me a long time. And a too long didn't read version is that it's quite literally just the dance game mechanics shifted over to the pump it up game mode. And he said, okay, I'll see what I can do about it. 
And you know how you get like a really good or bad feeling when with like a first impression, like a, a good or bad gut feeling? Well, I had an overwhelmingly good feeling about this person, Squirrel. I just kind of instantly felt like I could trust this person and that he was going to do truly something spectacular with the future of Rhythm Games and his small development team. And, you know, I was watching him in the server and... Of course, you know, I was there very busy trying to be an idea guy on how to make Stepmania better and, of course, sharing my concerns just like everybody else was doing in that server. No matter how big or, you know, small the concern or, you know, the amount of detail people were writing, he would always get back to people and would write back in great detail. And I was very, very impressed with that. So, you know, I was doing my thing with ponies. I was, you know, working on Hooves 1. And I get a DM from somebody who is not an Outfox developer, but someone who is very heavily invested in an Outfox, and he's officially labeled as an asset contributor. His name's Lero. You might know, recognize that name from somewhere else. And he DMs me and says, you know, I fixed up some complaints you had with Stepmania 5 and pump it up. And I said, oh, really? Show me. So he did. Uh, let's see if I can remember them all. I'm doing this all by memory, guys, so hopefully I'm, I'm right, but... I believe there were four things he did for me. Um, you know how the target arrows, they connect in Korean pump? Well, in Step Mania 5, some of them, they look like they overlap a little bit too heavily uh, to my liking. And I was just saying, you know, I think it would be nice if, if they were spaced out, like the dance game skin. They don't touch at all. And he comes out with a, a skin or a couple skins where the target arrows at the top don't touch at all. They were completely spaced out. And I thought that was a very nice look. I enjoyed that very much. What else did he do? He re-flip-flopped the reds and blues from the pro-inspired rhythm game skin for Pump It Up. Now, when we went to nursery school, our teacher always taught us that reds equal whole notes and blues equal eighth notes. And then the developers from Pro came along and they said, nope, the reverse is true now. Now, I love the Pump It Up Pro series despite it being greatly inferior to the ITG series. But if there was one thing that Pump It Up Pro did that really made me angry, it was the color change. Now, not all the color changes were bad. Uh, some of them, I think, were even better than ITG. For example, in ITG, greens were 16th notes. I believe in Pump It Up Pro, they were yellow. And I think that, was, that change was actually for the better. But the reds to blues, switching them around... I couldn't stand it. I think I even remember asking the man himself, Kyle Ward, why that change, and he gave me an explanation. Unfortunately, this was truly so long ago that I don't even remember what he said. All I remember was reading his reply and still feeling unimpressed and hating this change very, very much. But okay, Lero had a skin where the colors were the way I liked them, um, reds and blues, uh, like ITG. And this was important to me because... Uh, you know, people. I made chart transitions. So when people play the, my ITG charts, the colors are fine. When people play my Pump It Up Pro charts, it looks like I magically chose a bad offset. And also, it's a little bit frustrating for me as a step maker because when I'm making the chart transitions and I see a, a blue jump when I'm making um, Pump uh, with the Rhythm Game skin, I have to ask myself, is that an eighth note or is that a whole note? It's not the most pleasant thing in the world. So this was actually a wonderful change for me, in my opinion. Uh, I, I don't know one person out there who thought the pro um, color swap was, was a good idea for the reds and blue. I can't, I can't find one person out there. And I remember I played the rhythm game skin once in arcades, and I hated it so much that I just stuck with Exceed to Zero the whole time uh, I spent playing the pro series. Okay, what else did he do? He fixed a missing graphic uh, for the popular rhythm game uh, note skin. And... Um, it was for the rolls. It had a missing graphic. And it's kind of funny because while there were no lifts in official Pump It Up Pro, I remember seeing people uh, bring their edits with lifts in them, and the lifts would show up as Xs, missing graphics. The same thing was going on with the rolls here. And while this doesn't sound like a big deal, um, it's still kind of important to me because I made a lot of roll charts for Pump It Up in Step Mania. And when you see them as Xs, and you're pretty much going to need the... The, uh, the rhythm note skin to play the pump charts that I made for Stepmania 5. It's, it's ugly. It's really ugly. And that was a nice change. And of course, I saved the best for last. Back then, I actually called this a bug. But looking back at it today, um, I would just call it pure laziness. When you're in the Stepmania 5 editor, 
and you're on the rhythm uh, note skin for Pump It Up, when you drop a, a group of fakes in the editor and then hit the playback, all those fakes will show up as the color blue, regardless of what color they should actually show as. And this is really frustrating to me because when people play my ITG charts, the colors show up just fine with the fakes. And then when they go to play like the boss charts, I'm talking about the boss fake charts, the really hard ones. And then when they go to play them and pump it up, it looks like the game's helping you cheat. Like it's giving you assistance. It's easy to get through those hard fake charts when you know in your mind that all the fakes are gonna be blue. So that fix really meant a lot to me. And uh, of course I thanked him. I thought the work was great that he did. Um, you know, I said before I had a really good feeling about the person, Squirrel, who was leading this project. But for the first time ever, I felt a small seed of hope planted in my heart when it came to the, the actual project itself. You know, for bronies who are supposed to be ruining the future of Stepmania, they're doing an absolute terrible job at that. If anything, they're making it a lot better. And this is proof right in front of my, my face. Unfortunately, I was not invested into Outfox at this time. I want to say, I'm sure I can check the chat history I've had with these guys. I want to say I was around for like Alpha 1, maybe even before. I'm just going to say play it safe and say I was definitely there for Alpha 2. But I was not invested into trying out, like playtesting Outfox yet. Uh, had they have come out with a Pump It Up Pro option for Outfox, I would have downloaded Outfox instantly. Like that would have been, yeah, I want Outfox right now, but... Um, I was not ready to try it yet, so this time a lot of time went by. I finished up Hooves 1, and then I was working on Hooves 2, and I had about 15 songs left to finish, and every few months I would go to Squirrel and say, hey, you know, I really am interested in Nine Panel, you know, are you guys thinking about it yet? And, um, you know, I went to him again, and I, and I brought it up, and he said, go ask Joust. Now, Joust... My goodness, uh, I originally knew him as epony.lib or something. He changes his name sometimes like every 10 minutes in Discord, but I'm just going to call him Jouse. I think I think that's the main name he goes by. So I go to him and I say, Jouse, can you make a nine panel mode for me? Now is the time to do it because I'm about to wrap things up with Hooves 2. I'm ready to move on to something new. And he says, sure, I can do that for you. Now, sure, I can do that for you <sighs> means about four to six months in my mind, considering just how ridiculously busy this small development team is. So I said, okay, four to six months. That'll give me plenty of time to finish up what I'm doing. And then I can take a little rest break um, before I get into the next thing. So, you know, I said, this, this sounds good. So a day or two later, he pings me and he says, I have your nine panel mode ready. And I'm like, you're kidding me. You finished an entire game mode in Outfox for me in a day or two. He goes, yeah, come on and try it. It's ready. And unfortunately I did thank Joust but I, uh, I didn't mean to be rude, but I ignored it. And I ignored it because when I started working on Hooves 2, I said no promises on the song list, like on the amount of songs I make. But once I hit 75 songs, I did technically make a public promise that I would not give anything less than 100. So I had to fulfill that promise and I had to put on the horse blinders and um, wrap it up. I worked as fast as I could and I got it done. And then I downloaded Outfox for the first time, and I believe this was the very, very, very last version of Outfox Alpha 3. And I got a Pony song, I cut it, I took it to the editor, and I said, listen, I really appreciate it that you guys made me this special mode for me, but do not expect me to make a step file pack for this mode. Do not even expect me to finish a single step file. I have no idea if I'm going to love this mode, if I'm going to hate it, I have no idea if it's going to be too confusing for me to follow with all these arrows all over the place. I have no idea, but I do know one thing. I want to try, and try I did. And I'm not kidding you when I say that by the time I hit the fifth measure of that song I was charting, I was already madly in love with Nine Panel. I was hooked on it. This mode felt like it was made specifically for me. I felt like I had the ultimate form of creativity and freedom in step charting. I had all these new patterns to explore and play around with. Um, I, I could do things with minds that I thought I could never do in a step chart. I was having the time of my life. Like my hype meter was off the charts. I was as excited, if not more excited, than when the first time I laid my eyes on ITG. I was having a blast. So I finished that chart up and then I said, okay, I had a great time. I need to try doubles. And I started to write the doubles and all I could get 
was the down left arrow with the zero key. And I'm kind of embarrassed, but I had to go and ask, how the heck do you write doubles for nine panel? And apparently you have to hold the alt key and hit the numbers at the top to get the player two side to show. So, okay, that was a little bit tricky. It took me some time to get used to, but I adapted rapidly and I finished the doubles chart and I had a wonderful time. And I said, you know what? I'm absolutely sold on this nine panel business. I have to make a step pack for this nine panel mode. And I said, what should I make? And I thought about it and I thought about the old things I loved back then. I'd love to revisit the music for the Unreal Tournament game and make nine panel charts for that. Or, you know, my old Killer Instinct step pack. I'd love to, you know, fix that up and make some nine panel charts for that too. Or I even had ideas to make like a nostalgic 90s themed a uh, pack of alternative rock radio hits. That's probably a good idea that I didn't do that because syncing something like that would be disastrous. But I just remembered something. I was introduced to Project Outfox through a hate comment. And it's kind of crazy because ever since the, the day I got involved with Outfox, all these years later, any no matter what social media platform I'm on, anytime Outfox gets brought up, it's a hate comment. And people were freaking furious about Outfox. And they wanted to witch hunt the developers. And I never really understood it. I felt like I was the only person out there who was excited for Outfox. And, you know, I, I guess the earliest controversy I remember was the closed source. And it wasn't even really controversy because they said, we're going to go open source soon. They had their reasons. And what happened? Did they lie? Did they not go open source? No, they went open source like a few months after they said they would. So there was no controversy to begin with. It was kind of ridiculous. But, you know, I, I just don't get it because even after that, people were leaving absolutely horrendous comments. Uh, some of them were so bad that I can only hope that the people from Project Outfox didn't see them because they were really that upsetting. Um, and if they did see them, uh, props to them for delivering a fantastic product on top of all that hate that they got. But um, I, I guess it's changed. Like, I can't, I can't explain it. I guess people are just happy to do, play with what they have. It's not like anybody's taking a gun to their head and say, you have to play Project Outfox. People are happy, and, and they don't understand when other people want something different. It's, like, upsetting to them or something. I can't explain it. I really can't. Uh, it's unfortunate, but um, I remember a lot of those hate comments also had brony hate tagged to them. And I learned uh, that mo most, if not all, of the Outfox developers are bronies, or at the very least, they have some kind of connection to ponies. And uh, I, f I felt really bad. I felt like they didn't deserve that. And um, Outfox really feels like a love letter written to the freaks, the losers, and the rejects of the stepping community. And I wanted to... I mean, that would obviously be me, by the way. <laughs> And I wanted to write a love letter and a thank you note back to them. And I wanted to specifically target the bronies on the development team for Project Outfox. So that's why I decided to go ahead and make In the Hooves Ponied Up 3. Now, I didn't want to call it Techno Pony 3 or, or Techno Pony period because it's just it doesn't have a great ring to it. I came up with the name In the Hooves. I think that name is very funny. I like it a lot. And it's not misleading because I'm taking my two favorite games, In the Groove and Pump It Up Pro, and I'm merging them together in this unique nine panel mode. It's like four and five panel had a nine panel baby. And of course, you know, I wrote some more charts. I wrote another two with the default skin and they weren't anything rhythmically complex, but you know, thinking back to the first chart I ever made for nine panel, that was a very ballsy chart I wrote for nine. Uh, that was a very complicated,